What's going on gamers? This is John with Games381.com and welcome to my Games381 in 3D channel. In this episode I'm going to do a recent game pickups. Now this is since my last game pickups, it's been a while. I was going to be include over 140 different games over 30 different platforms. So I've got a lot of games to go over. I'm going to start kind of more retro and move on to more modern. So let's start with some classic NES games. Picked up uh, Destiny of the Emperor. This is a cool game. It's an RPG by Capcom. Um, and I'm just a big fan of Capcom games, but I haven't really played too much of this, to be honest with you. But from what I've played, uh, it's actually been a pretty good RPG. Smash TV, this is by Claim. It's an orig original Williams arcade game uh, based on the arcade. And actually, it's a really fun top-down shooter. Uh, the controls are really weird because you actually, it's, in the arcade, you use two joysticks, where this you use the AB button and the directional pad. This is all, also ported to the Super Nintendo. Definitely recommend the Super Nintendo port rather than the NES. But I was really surprised to see this uh, for the NES, and I paid six bucks for it. For it. Got Jaws for the NES by LGN. Usually LGN titles aren't very good. They have really good licenses. You know, they have stuff like Friday Thirteenth, which is terrible. But this is Jaws, and it's actually a pretty fun game. Uh, there's kind of two different gameplays on this game. First, you're in a boat, and you're, you're kind of moving around a boat. And you have to dive and then search for Jaws. Uh, pretty fun game. I paid two bucks for it. I'm really surprised I didn't have this before. Pinball Quest, four bucks, but this is by Jellico. I paid four bucks for this. Pretty fun game, actually. It's a pinball game, but I think there's like three or four different pin tables on here. Uh, but it's more than just a pinball game because there's actually enemies you have to hit with the ball, stuff like that. One of the better pinball games for the NES is called Pinball Quest. Xenophobe, this is by Sunsoft. I, I, I believe the original game was an Atari arcade game. Uh, it's a co op game, it's a split screen. Um, it's a pretty fun, like, sh side scoring shooter. Uh, if you like games like Aliens, the Alien Franchise, kind of like that, um, there's different characters you can play. play uh, one of the few split screen games for the NES. That's Xenophobe. Daydreamin' Davy. This is kind of an interesting game. This is uh, this game came out, I paid four bucks for it. It's basically the premise is you're this kid who's daydreaming. Uh, it's a top down kind of adventure style game, very similar to Zelda. Not a big fan of this game. Uh, it's very glitchy and the enemies attack you. It's, it's kind of hard to control. I uh, don't recommend this game, Day Daydreaming Davy, unless you can get it really cheap. Two games by Tengen. Tengen is actually an Atari company. They made games for, it's a brand of Atari, they made games for the NES. Uh, Roadrunner, which is another ar arcade port, I paid six bucks for it. It's based on the arcade. Basically, you're a Roadrunner, you're running away from a wild E. Coyote, and there's these uh, seeds that you have to get, which is basically your timer, your energy, and the, you're supposed to avoid wild E. Coyote. Pretty fun game. And Pac-Mania as well, Pac-Mania. Notice the cartridges are a lot different than the normal NES carts. Uh, this is like Pac-Man, but it's kind of a almost a 3D perspective type of Pac-Man. This looks like you're moving through Legos, it's a maze. Uh, really fun game. Highly recommend Pac-Mania for the NES. For the Famicom, uh, a lot of these games, I would just want to state also about 95% of these games I picked up in the wild, meaning I didn't go on eBay or anything like that. And I went to a number of gaming conventions, including the Classic Gaming Expo in Vegas, Port Portland Retro Gaming Expo and obviously Portland. Uh, and my wife actually spotted this out in Portland. Uh, uh, this is Star Wars. And actually, no, I think she got this in Vegas. We got this in Vegas, the Classic Gaming Expo. Paid 35 bucks for it, but Star Wars for Famicom, the original Famicom. And this is complete unopened. And comes with instructions and the cart. The thing about this game is it plays a lot different than the Star Wars for the NES. In fact, it's more of a sad school or shooter, very similar to Super Star Wars. Definitely preferred this game port over the NES port, which I'm not a big fan of. Okay, that's it for the NES games. I picked up uh, the CyberPad, which is basically a programmable uh, compute controller for the Genesis. I uh, paid four bucks for it. You can basically program your buttons to push to certain things. You can do rapid mode. I've never really seen this before. I thought it was kind of interesting. It looks very, very interesting as well. I uh, got some uh, retro games, including for the Atari 2600, Cleovision, and Intellivision. Intellivision, I got uh, Dragons, uh, Advanced Dra Dungeons and Dragons. This is uh, Treasure of Tarmin. I paid 50 cents for this. Uh, it's it kind of plays interesting. You're in this basically you're in a hole underground and you're supposed to collect items, kind of like a venture uh, for the Atari 2600. And there's different enemies you're supposed to compete or, 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 or destroy. For that's it for the Intellivision. Uh, picked up uh, ColecoVision. This is blackjack versus poker, or blackjack and poker rather. Uh, it's just a standard blackjack and poker game for the ColecoVision. If you like those kind of tabletop games, definitely worth checking out. I think I paid a couple dollars for this. Uh, this is by Atari Soft. This is Coleco, for the ColecoVision. This is Centipede, a direct port for the arcade. 
a really good port of Centipede for the arcade for the ColecoVision, so definitely check this out. Any of these Atari Soft paddles for the ColecoVision are somewhat uncommon, uncommon, I wouldn't necessarily say rare, but definitely uncommon. Definitely check that out. Here's Asteroids for the Atari 2600. Uh, this is a classic game. I paid a dollar for it. I'm really surprised that I didn't have this before. It's basically you're a ship. There's a whole bunch of asteroids coming towards you and plays just like the arcade. One of the better games for the Atari 2600. In fact, it's a must-own if you have Atari 2600, in my personal opinion. Pay a dollar or two for it. No more than that, though. Uh, this is kind of an uncommon game for the Atari 2600. This is Gremlins. Uh, this plays kind of like Kaboom and uh, Space uh, and like Space Invaders. Uh, basically, the first part of it is there's these mudflies jumping down, and you're supposed to collect them all before they get to the burgers and below because they can't eat after midnight. Once they eat the burger, they become a cocoon, and then the next stage is those cocoons hatch into gremlins, and they're falling, and you're supposed to shoot them before they hit the ground or destroy it. Uh, it plays first part plays very similar to Kaboom. Second part plays very similar to uh, Space Invaders. Uh, definitely an uncommon game for the Atari 2600. Big fan of Gremlins for the movie. This game I picked up at Atari Age. This is called uh, Cheddary. This basically plays just like it's a homebrew, but plays just like Tetris. And the music is phenomenal for this. In fact, if you like Tetris, it plays really well. And the music, I'm really surprised, actually uh, sounds really good for the Atari 2600. Another item I picked up for the NES is I got this power pad. I paid 10 bucks for it. And it's complete with a power pad and case and everything else. So that's pretty cool. It's games like... Uh, World Championships and a whole bunch of the game purported for the power pad, which kind of had a power pad, but I didn't have one in complete, and I paid 10 bucks for it. It's not too bad of a deal. Moving on to uh, Genesis. I picked up a couple Genesis cards. Uh, this is uh, Tailspin uh, by for the Genesis. This is an exclusive Genesis game, and it's based on um, the, the cartoon show for Disney Afternoon. It's a platforming game. Uh, plays very different than Tailspin uh, ported to other consoles. I'm a big fan of these Disney uh Disney games ported to the Genesis, and this is one of them. Also, I picked up Scooby Doo uh, Mystery. This is by Acclaim and Sunsoft. Now, Scooby Doo Mystery for the Super Nintendo was a lot different. This is more of a point and click. Uh, graphics are similar to Day of the Tentacle, and it's one of the better games for the system. It's kind of an uncommon game, not a rare game, but uncommon game. Um, also, picked up uh, this is an interesting story behind this. this is called Astro Gover, and this is for the 5200, the Atari 5200. Uh, and I picked this up at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. This game was never officially released for the 5200. A guy found a prototype at a Goodwill, decided to make 50 copies of it, which this is 15 of 50, it stayed in my back. And it's a children's learning game for the Atari 5200. Not very high replay value, obviously, because it's here for kids, but it's featuring Grover from Sesame Street, and uh, it's pretty rare for this console. And only available at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Uh, this is Castles of Illusion for the um, Sega Master System. Uh, I love these different uh, Mickey Mouse games. Uh, they're a lot of fun. It's a platforming game. Uh, there's several in the series, and this is definitely a really fun game for the system. You play as Mickey Mouse, and you, you have to jump on various enemies and uh, go, uh, go to the Castle of Illusion, essentially. So um, this is cool. This is uh, a Game Genie for the Game Gear. Uh, basically, you put your, your, game, your Game Gear games in here. There's a booklet included in here and a whole bunch of cheats. I paid 4 bucks for it. It's not a bad deal for that. Got this right here. This is uh, Baseball Stars for the Neo Geo Pocket. Uh, I love the Neo Geo Pocket. Paid five bucks for this game. Uh, a lot of good games. Now the problem with the Neo Geo Pocket is not backlit, very similar to the original Game Boy. But the games on there are a lot of fun, including Metal Gear uh, and Baseball Stars is one of them. Love Baseball Stars. Plays a lot different than the NES port or the Neo Geo arcade port as well, or AES for that matter. Really wanted to beef up my my Game Gear collection, so I got some more games uh, outside of the Game Genie. I picked up the Surreal 24 in one. This has got 20, it's a bootleg, got 24 games in one, including, uh, let's see, uh, Pac-Man, Ninja Gaiden, Super Monaco, Hang On, Ghost House, a whole bunch of other games on there, it's pretty cool. Aladdin, which plays a lot different than the Genesis port. Aladdin's one of my favorite games for the Genesis, this is a lot different, I paid five bucks for this. It starts off as where uh, you're running from, uh, you're, on, you're, you're Aladdin, you're running from your enemy, um, and it just plays a lot different, but it's still a fun game, good, good music. This is Aerial Assault for the Game Gear, I paid a dollar for this. Got this at Goodwill. Uh, this is a, just a standard shooter, uh, size point shooter, like similar to our type. Um, you know, for a dollar, really can't go wrong, but it's not that great of a game. Uh, this is uh, also another uh, Roadrunner uh, game. This is called Desert Speed Trap, and this is different, a lot different than the one I showed you for the NES because this is more of a um, more of a platformer rather than an arcade style game. This is more of a platformer where you have different things you have to jump on and stuff like that. This is Land of Illusion, just similar to Castle Illusion I just showed you for the Sega Master System. This is a the sequel, this is Land of Illusion for the Game Gear. 
uh, five bucks for it. Uh, just like I said, big good game for good series of games for the Sega Master System and Game Gear. Also released for the Genesis as well. Uh, this is Sonic uh, Triple Trouble, and this is uh, probably one of the better Sonic games for the system. I paid two bucks for it. I'm not a big fan of Sonic 2 on the uh, Game Gear, but this one does it right. You can play either Sonic and Tails on it. It's a really fun Sonic game. So if you're a big fan, fun, uh, fan of Sonic games, uh, definitely check it out. I got some uh, Game Boy games as well because I really wanted to beef up my Game, game Boy collection. Uh, so I, I wanted to get some. Uh, and uh, first off starter was Street Fighter 2. I uh, paid 7 bucks for it. Uh, can't play out all the characters, but um, surprisingly, uh, it's not a bad game for the Game Boy. Uh, and despite that there's only uh, two buttons you can push for it, uh, definitely not the best port for the arcade console, obviously, but uh, if you have a Game Boy and want to take Street Fighter 2 uh, on the go, it's pretty cool. Wave Race, paid 6 bucks for this, this is for the Game Boy. It's a lot different than the N64 version because it's actually more of a top-down racer rather than a you know, third-person perspective, uh, but uh, it's 6 bucks. This is Empire Strikes Back, this is actually uh, poured over by Ubisoft, and uh, this plays just like the NES port, which is by JVC and Lucasfilm, but this is not a good game. In fact, it's one of my least favorite Star Wars games. Uh, the jump mechanics on it isn't very good. It's hard to control. I don't recommend Empire Strikes Back unless you get it for, for a couple of dollars. Bugs Bunny 2, uh, Crazy Castle for the Game Boy. Uh, he plays Bugs Bunny. You're supposed to collect uh, like different keys and uh, different doors about avoiding enemies. Very similar to like Mario vs. Donkey Kong today that you might be used to seeing. Uh, kind of a more of a puzzle platforming game. Uh, Wario Land, this is uh, Super Mario Land 3. Uh, I had played Wario for the Virtual Boy, uh, Wario Land, and it plays very similar. Uh, and there's, it's a platforming game just like Super Mario Brothers, so if you like those, definitely check it out. I love Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy, one of my favorite games for the system. Decided to pick this up, it's not as good as that, but it's still certainly pretty fun. Uh, this is Donkey Kong for the Game Boy, I was really expecting this to be a lot different than what I, what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be like the arcade port, which it does start off as, as that, but then it goes into a different, more puzzle uh, solving. Uh, and this series evolved into Mario vs. Donkey Kong. It's, it's compatible with uh, Super Game Boy, or the Game Boy Color, and definitely the best to play on that because it actually shows uh, like an outline of the arcade, uh, which is cool. A really good game. I paid four bucks for it. A lot of fun. Roger Rabbit, uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit by Capcom. Uh, it follows just like the movie. Uh, it's a port like, just like the NES. Uh, it's a pretty good game. Um, you know, certainly not as good as the movie. The Road Ghostbusters, this is uh, not a good game. It's by Activision, but for the Game Boy. And I uh, love that it's based on the cartoon. Love the cartoon, but unfortunately this game doesn't do a very good justice. I picked up two Turtles games. This is, I picked up uh, Turtles 2, Back from the Sewers, and Turtles 3, Radical Rescue. I had the first one. Uh, these are platforming, uh, kind of beat em up style games uh, by Konami. I'm a big fan of tur uh, Turtles. They both play almost identical. And the graphics are fun, music's fun. Uh, if you're a big fan of Turtles, definitely recommend this. Picked up all three Donkey Kong Lands. These are uh, all in yellow carts. Now these are, are actually completely different games in the Donkey Kong Country series, but play very similar. You can only play as one Kong at a time. You can't play as two of them on screen like you can in the Super Nintendo. Uh, but it's none, nonetheless, it is, they're great games. Uh, a lot shorter than the Super Nintendo games, but nonetheless, I paid six bucks a piece for them. Also picked up uh, Turn and Burn, which is kind of a uh, it's this flight simulator style game. I paid a dollar for it at Goodwill. Uh, I'm glad I didn't pay any more than that because it's not it's, it's really hard to control. I got uh, w -E WWF Warzone for the Game Boy, and I paid a dollar for this. Again, uh, not a good game. You can pick it's like six different characters, but unfortunately the, the, the controllers are broken in that game. Uh, Kid Icarus, I paid ten bucks for it for the Game Boy. Classic Kid Icarus game, ported like this the, over to the NES from the NES, um, and you play as Kid Icarus, and it's um, it's a platforming game, really fun, a lot of fun. Tiny Toons, uh, Bad Big Break for the Konami, uh, for the Game Boy, and uh, here's Bad Big's Break, this is Bad's Big Break, it's a tongue twister, this is Tiny Toons, uh, by Konami, uh, this is Tiny Toon Adventures, rather, and I paid $2 for this, it's a great platforming game, I mean, graphics are good, if you're a fan of games like DuckTales, uh, definitely check this out, because it plays very similar to that. You got a game for the Game Boy uh, Color, that is Donkey Kong Country, and surprisingly, this is a fun, really great port, I paid 10 bucks for it, but... Man, it's got extra battery in here with extra memory, and surprisingly, music really matches. It plays just like Super Nintendo port. Graphics are, certainly are, are uh, notched down because it's 8 bit rather than 16 bit. But if you're a big fan of Donkey Kong Country, definitely check it out for the Game Boy Color. Also, got this Joust. This is for the Lynx. This is unopened. Uh, this is a brand new, or this is brand new unopened. It's a new old stuff I got at the Classic Gaming Expo. I love Joust. It's a basic uh, arcade game. 
uh, and uh, just love how it plays. You base on an ostrich, you play similar to a uh, balloon fight. If you ever played balloon fight for the NES, uh, where you're supposed to land on your enemies. And I heard the Link's port is pretty awesome. I'm going to probably keep this unopened because it's very hard to find Link's unopened games. More unusual, anyway. Uh, also picked up some Jaguar games. I picked up... Um, I also got two more NES games I almost forgot to mention to you guys before. Uh, these are both uh, complete in box. This is Kung Fu, I paid 8 bucks for, and Duck Hunt, I paid 10 bucks for. But these are the original Wave NES games. Pretty cool that you can find these... Uh, you know, in box, and I think for eight to ten bucks, not too bad of a deal. Uh, Kung Fu is based on arcade. Dunk Hunt uses the light gun, which I think many of you guys have probably played or have seen. Uh, really fun game for the NES. Picked up Splatterhouse for the TurboGrafx-16. I paid, I think, ten bucks for this this game right here. Uh, really a must-own for the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, it's by Namco. Uh, one of the better ports based on the arcade, and uh, definitely superior to this port than the Genesis port, in my personal opinion. Guy looks like very similar to Jason. It's a very gory, great game to play during the Halloween time, certainly. Got some Jaguar games. I uh, picked up Theme Park, which is a cart for the Jaguar. Uh, Ten bucks for it. It's basically a simulator, kind of sim similar to Think Sim City, but you, you design your own amusement park. One of my goals is to complete my Jag CD, my Jaguar CD collection, so I wanted to do that, and I did that. I got Hover Strike. Uh, this is a similar game. You're in this, this kind of think of like a battle, almost like Battle Zone. And it's a first-person kind of simulator game. Um, music's great. The graphics are cool, 3D, but the gameplay isn't very good. I want to thank Chris uh, Fanner, a good friend of mine, who hooked me up with this Primal Rage game for Jaguar. This is one of the hardest games to find for the system. Uh, great port from the arcade. It's a it's a fighting game where you play as dinosaurs. Also picked up Space Quest. Uh, also picked up Space uh, Space Ace. Also, I also picked up Space Ace, which is for the Jack CD. That's a great port from the arcade. Uh, same guys who brought uh, Dragon's Lair and also drew uh, the Secrets of the Nim uh, cartoon, which I love growing up. They also animated this. It's a, basically it's an animation cartoon where you have to hit certain buttons at certain times in order to move forward in the game. This is Highlander, the last of the McClouds. This is a really rare game for the Jag CD as well. I only paid 10 bucks for it. Uh, it. Think of like Zelda for the CDI, the an poor animation and voiceovering overs, with play control that is worse than the original like, Resident Evil. Um, it is not a very good game. Um, don't really recommend it, but it's certainly rare for the Jag CD. Picked up Baldi's for the Jaguar CD as well. Paid ten bucks for it. Uh, this is kind of like it's much like Lemmings in a way. You, you control these different bald guys uh, to build like Lemmings meet some city, and you uh, they build different houses and stuff like that. Kind of you play God so to speak. Uh, that's it for the Jaguar CD collection. I picked up some uh, Dreamcast games. This is Jet Grind Radio. Uh, great game for the Dreamcast, paid 15 bucks for it. I know they just recently put this out for an HD. I can do, do, download it as DLC. Definitely recommend it because it's got cell shaded graphics, cell shaded graphics rather, and uh, it's just a lot of fun to play. Four Wheel Thunder, uh, paid six bucks for this. this. is by Midway, poured over from the arcade. Uh, this is in the line of Hydro Thunder, Off Road Thunder, those series of games. Uh, your your big wheel trucks in this one. That's it for Dreamcast. Picked up some PlayStation 1 games. I got uh, You Don't Know Jack. This is a trivia game for the, the PlayStation 1. I love this growing up. I know they just recently released a new one for the modern day consoles, but uh, it's still a lot of fun. Also, uh, 007 Racing, James Bond, four bucks for it. It's a racing game, but it's got there's different missions, and the, the, the weapons in this are really cool, actually. Uh, Pro Pinball, there's six tables included. I paid three bucks for this. Uh, if you like pinball games, it's a really fun game. There's actually other pinball Pro Pinball series of games for the PlayStation 1. This is the first one. And last game I picked up for the PlayStation 1 is South Park Rally. This is by Acclaim. It's a, a racing game with South Park. Uh, you get the voices and everything. Uh, this is also ported to the N64. So if you have an N64, you can check it out there. That's it. Another game I picked up was uh, Guitar Hero on Tour Decades for the Nintendo DS. I got this new at uh, half price books for five bucks. And I wanted to get this because there's uh, 28 different uh, songs on here. And if you need the original like DS that has the Game Boy Advance uh, adapter to it so, so you can use it. Uh, pretty fun. Actually, you know, it's one of my guilty pleasures is this Guitar Hero Rock Band games. This is pretty fun on the go. Well, guys, that concludes part one. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.